Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. For those of you who know me, welcome back. And for those of you who don't, I'm Pia and I'm your host for all things luxury. Today I am bringing you on a lovely event. We've just arrived to Chaumont sur Loire. It's a beautiful region here in France and we're actually attending the event. Comme fleurir est un art or when to blossom is an art. I actually have my little um, Olympus camera in there. So we've just arrived in here. We're just about to have breakfast and then we'll have the beautiful flower arrangement event happening. So I'll take you along with the experts of flower arrangements and we're also going to have a beautiful look at the gardens of the castle. We're also having a look at the castle itself. So I'll take you along. I need to catch up with the group. But yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Always running a little bit behind the group so I can show you guys a little bit about the grandiosity of this beautiful gardens. What you just saw was one of the Meilleurs Rougeurs de France and he was just explaining us this piece he's created in which he's inspired himself from a meteorite crashing on Earth. And I think he's absolutely nailed it. My goodness, it's spectacular. Same creator, but now he's working with round shapes, a lot of pinks in order to pay an ode to Catherine de' Medici and her femininity. Little outfit of the day. I'm wearing my lovely small ballerinas and really not regretting not having worn heels for this event. Now in here we've got the most exquisite installation and it's by an artist called Stefan Kiran. Hope I'm not butchering his name. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, talk about a dream lunch. We're about to walk into the greenhouse for lunch time. Hello you guys, we are back home from the dreamiest press trip. Oh my goodness, where to start from? Before going into any details about this trip, I thought I'd go a little bit into a skin detail close-up with you. Something really intimate. If you haven't seen my How I Got Rid of Acne video, I advise you to have a little look at it. I'll link it in here for you. Basically, since this is my week 12, I think, using Differin or Adapalene for getting rid of acne, I thought I'd do a little checkup because, oh my goodness, there's literally zero pimples. Anything you might see around here, hyperpigmentation marks, but there's literally no more alive pimples, which for me is a revelation because if you have seen that video, you will know that I struggled with acne for the years that followed coming out of lockdown. I basically started having this chin acne and a little bit in here and in here from the mask and then it never went away even after we stopped using the mask. I knew it wasn't because of the diet because I do follow a semi-strict I would say but pretty clean diet altogether because of endometriosis and so I knew it wasn't coming from the diet. It literally started when we started wearing the mask and then never left and I am super happy to have found a solution that was convenient for me. Even the hyperpigmentation mark left in here have started to go after using this different product. I'm thinking of doing a little bit of a pause of it and if my skin doesn't react and pimples don't come back, perhaps what I could do is do a couple of chemical peels and get myself rid of this type of hyperpigmentation marks that I have. If anybody else has experienced the hyperpigmentation marks left after, do let me know what is your 
holy grail solution for getting rid out of them. To be honest, to me it's like a nice problem to have, I'm not bothered by it. I was very bothered about the active acne before. So if it's week 12 or week 13, it's almost three months of an acne free life and to be honest, touch wood, I don't have wood here, the purge period wasn't even that bad. Like yeah it was bad for a little bit but I mean I knew you had to go through it and now I can enjoy what to me feels like amazing skin because you know people around friends and family have commented on it, they've mentioned how much clearer they see that my skin is. So I'm really happy about that and yeah just wanted to share that with you. Now let's get my makeup done because I'm filming a couple of videos for you and with a couple of brands today so I just need to be looking a little bit more presentable. By the way this is what I use today to hydrate my skin. I do love some that are a little bit more high-end whether it be my NAD plus one with Intuise or um, the Abe Royal with Galan or even the rose ones from by Terry. However, this one is something that I always keep coming back to. A, because I tend to have hay fever allergies and I find that something like this is calming on my skin and B, because it's actually formulated specially for people that have issues with acne. Of the two times that I moisturize my skin every day, this will probably be one that I always use and then another time I'll use something a little bit more high-end. Something else I've been really, really did about doing in regards to keeping my skin clear is cleaning my brushes and I say that with a dirty brush in hand but <laughs> I mean in a really really regular basis which I didn't used to because I only used to like clean my brushes maybe once a week but now after almost every application or like one yes one no I will use the better limpiador de brochas brush cleanser so I don't really know this one's in so many languages I don't know where they're from or they're from Barcelona I guess that's why it's better with just one T. This is really really good as a spot cleaner. Starting off with my favorite foundation balm. This one's Hermes Planer. I love the way this looks so natural in the skin. Does anyone else get the witch hair? Ah, it always hurts so much. Anyway, back to being fabulous. How beautiful is it on the skin? I really really like this foundation. By the way, the shade I'm wearing is Chambre. It's kind of like my winter shade and summertime I'll wear Palomino or whenever I've done some fake tan. So I probably will tomorrow because tonight I'm planning to have a big bathing myself in fake tan session. But one of the reasons I really love this foundation is the fact that it's enriched with a lot of skincare properties. So it's not only giving a little bit of light and evening out my skin tone it's also adding some delicious juicy skincare properties and it's got 30 SPF in it. To me it's a win-win. It doesn't look very matte but it also doesn't look super shiny. It doesn't make me look oily throughout the day. I have combination skin by the way for anybody wondering and I am very very happy about what this looks like and I actually know I have a combination skin. I had a couple of dermatologists told me about it but the other day I went to the press day of Algotam and the team at Algotam actually very kindly provided an analysis of my skin. This is one of the newest services that they are offering, basically composed of a scanner of your face. And after that scan, a skin specialist will look at it, determine what type of skin you have, what's the age of your skin, not your actual biological age, but the age of your skin. It will also determine what your skin needs, what it needs to keep on doing, what it has to stop doing. And it's a wonderful machine that shows you even like where your wrinkles are going to be, how to prevent that, how is your seven production doing. There's a myriad of things that they're doing and analyzing with the scanner and then according to that they'll propose a protocol, how we say in here, or a beauty treatment to target the things that have come up throughout your analysis. Algotam is highly known to have effective results. Everything they produce is created with sea ingredients, whether that's from an algae, from water from a certain sea. They used to only produce their products from water in a sea here in France and now they've expanded their whole range and incorporated things from algae coming from other oceans in the world. Being a beachside girl, I love the proposition from this brand. I'm personally a big fan of better ourselves with the help of technology and I think this new treatment they propose with the previous analysis is 
a fantastic option. They've got spas across all of France. If I do find it, I will put it in here. On my brows, I'm using the Dior Brow Styler, and this one's in the color 03 Brown. I actually normally take dark brown, but they didn't have any more in stock, so I settled for this one. And it looks like a pretty good match. On that same press day, I actually also visited the stand of Saint Monde. And Saint Monde, or Five Worlds, is another French high-end beauty brand that also provides services in their spas as well as products for taking home. I'm being a little bit lacy today so I'm just using highlight as my actual eyeshadow. I quite like it because it opens up the eye a little bit. At least that's what I tell myself. And then I just kind of go in there with a fluffy blending brush. They're all over the world. Whenever you go to a nice hotel you'll probably find one of their spas. And in Paris you can also find them at La Samaritaine, one of the most iconic department stores here in France. They are pretty known for their use of holistic treatments, medicinal plants, and ancient techniques in their spa treatments, as well as in the products that they sell for you to be able to use at home. I just finished doing my eyeliner with the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal Eyeliner. This one's in the shade Coco, and I blurred it out a little bit with this little spongy that it comes with at the end. Now, I think the main two things that caught my eye at the Sunk Mon stand, and why I decided to talk to you about it, even if so many other brands were being exhibited was their proposal for the holiday time. They propose a post-advent calendar, which I think is brilliant. On the week following up Christmas, you get this gorgeous sort of lotus flower that opens up and shows all of the wonderful products that you get. You also don't just get minis, which seems like pretty good value for money. I think the idea of a post advent calendar is fantastic to continue on that sort of festive spirit and not let the blues creep in on the days that follow up Christmas, which can happen to quite a lot of people, particularly those living in the north and experiencing sometimes not the best weather between Christmas and the new year. For bronzer, I'm using a Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. This one's in the shade number two, Moyenne. I'm applying that with a contour brush from Chanel, which is my absolute favorite. One of my girlfriends that works at Chanel gifted this one to me. Something else that was really nice from the Saint Monde's latest spa proposal is their Covido Royal skin enhancing treatment. Now the Covido or Covido, however you want to call it, it's an ancient Japanese technique that massages the skin in a certain way to stimulate its own production of collagen. It also helps to bring it up. I've had this treatment done a couple of times and I can honestly say that when you walk out it looks like you've had a little bit of a lifting which is absolutely wonderful. It helps to keep your muscles sort of toned up as well. It's like having a natural lifting. Something else that's worth noting regarding their Covido Royal treatment is that they'll do it with the Jeto Supreme line, which is the highest end of products that they propose, being an anti-aging, skin regeneration, and collagen stimulation product, which makes it a fantastic marriage to the Covido Royal treatment. For highlight, I just used that same one from Charlotte Tilbury. This one's from a dual palette that's called Hollywood something. Film Star Bronze and Glow. It's Film Star, not Hollywood. Potato Potato. And I use it in the color light medium. I love the way that kind of pulls together with me having used it as an eyeshadow and then just kind of highlighting the high points of the face. A little final step I like to do is to go in with this super thick brush from Mike Chico's Beauty and then just kind of like blend all that together. That's the final touch of putting the face together. And then the princess part of this week's press trips was obviously the visit to the Domaine de Chaumont-sur-Loire and the Chateau. That was the Ilia Mascara. It's been my absolute favorite this year. And then for lipstick, I'm doing Chanel Destination. This is a Rouge Coco Flash collection. I wonder if I should do a pink today. No, I think I'm gonna stay within the neutrals. That's all right. I went on this press trip with my reporter hat for Stylius magazine, which as you know, I collaborate with quite a lot. I will leave it linked on the description down below. Now, the occasion for visiting this amazing castle that once belonged to Caterina de' Medici was to visit the avant-première of the fifth year edition of the flower arrangement exhibition called Can't Fleurir est un art or when to flower arrange is an art. It could also mean when to blossom is an art but I think the first one's what they actually mean. During the exhibition we saw flower arrangements created from French florists as well as international ones. One of the things that was 
actually really humbling was the fact that those exhibiting representing France were actually florists that have earned the title of Meilleur Ouvrier en France. This is a title that is earned in France after participating on a competition held for different craftsmanships and it's held every four years and the winners get a medal. This just means that they are the top of the top at doing flower arrangements, some of them in the world, which is the reason why I kindly accepted the invitation to go cover the event since, as you know, I like to bring you news about everything that's got to do with luxury and what more luxurious than the most sumptuous ephemeral flower arrangement exhibition. So if you didn't catch the pre-announcement on my Instagram, I highly recommend to pay a visit to it next year. The fact that it's held in a chateau makes it all the more luxurious and I am certain so many of you would really enjoy paying a visit to this exhibit. The one you're currently seeing was my absolute favorite of all of the ones being exhibited. Don't get me wrong, they were all beyond sumptuous. However, this one particularly caught my eye. When talking to its creator, Dylan de Camp, who's also earned his Meilleur Ouvrier de France award, he was telling me about how the inspiration behind it came to be when he thought of what would happen if a meteorite would crush Earth. His creation was truly whimsical, colorful and it made the eye travel which is something that I adore when artists do. I'm using the Remington curling barrel and it's the thickest one they sell if I'm not mistaken regarding its diameter. My hair is the longest it's been in quite some time so I'm trying to stick to like really thick barrel pieces to make the process a little bit quicker. I don't really ever measure like to do it proper straight up there just kind of go in and do something. <laughs> the castle is opened up for visits and its amazing gardens are as well. I will leave it linked down below in case you want to check it out. If you're ever in France or planning a trip to France this could be a great pit stop and it's only an hour train ride away from Paris city center and then a short sort of 20 minute cab ride from there. The castle has several different dining options. The most sumptuous one and private one is a gastronomic experience served inside of their amazing greenhouse. Now this one is an option that's only available upon reservation. On this occasion they closed it up for us and for us the most delicious lunch time. I was lucky enough to have not one, not two, but three artists sitting sharing lunch with me on the table at the greenhouse. One of them was Berit, who's an internationally recognized Danish florist, and she was invited to participate on this year's Conferir et an Art exhibition. Her creations have endless lengths and she always tucks in a couple of golden branches, which is kind of like her signature brand. I also shared the table with Frédéric Dupré, I hope I'm not butchering their names, who has also been awarded the the Meilleur Ouvrier de France recognition and is another florist here in France. Now he was actually given the task to create his exhibition at the horse stables of the castle. Oh my goodness, that spoke right to my heart. His creations were absolutely divine. He played with an amazing dialogue between some other contemporary artists being exhibited permanently at the stables, his ephemeral creation and the fact that it is an outside exhibition. Honestly, chapeau to him, it was absolutely gorgeous. I think maybe his creations were my favorite. Ah, oh, I don't know, they were all amazing. I cannot decide which was my favorite, to be honest. And last but not least, I shared lunch with Eric Sanders, the photographer in charge of documenting this ephemeral exhibition. Being surrounded by such creative minds, it's always so inspiring. And no matter what their field of knowledge is, I always leave this events feeling so motivated to create better content for you guys, for myself, and even explore other areas of content creation. That's the curl stand, but while I let them set, I'm gonna go ahead and fetch the book that the president of the Domaine Chaumont sur Loire actually very kindly gifted me, and bring it over to share it with you. If this is not a princess worthy book, I don't know what is. I'm actually gonna pin this up while I let the curls settle. That means that when I open it up, it just kind of gives a little bit of volume 
to the front part of the face. Anyway, let's show you a little bit about the book and a little bit more about this beautiful ephemeral exhibition. It's a little letter from Chantal. This is lady I was just telling you about. I wish I had had it before the exhibition so I could have had everyone sign it, but I guess that will be in another creation. So this is the castle. And this is what we felt being inside of it. I'm also thinking that if I find it online, I will leave it linked down below in case anybody's already looking for some ideas for the holiday time. Comes November and we get bombarded with information. Sometimes we don't know what to get. And this can be such a gorgeous gift for maybe a mother-in-law, a grandma, a grandma at heart like me. <laughs> already I already have one but if you've got your friend wife girlfriend that's also a grandma at heart like I am or little princess at heart I totally forgot to put on my heat protectant but lately this is the one I've been using in case you're wondering I mainly use it because it smells delicious now I'm gonna put the tiniest bit of Olaplex number no. seven bonding oil this one was actually a gift from a hairstylist here in Paris. I'm just gonna add a little bit. All right, you guys, I'm gonna let you go now. Thank you all so much for having watched until here. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not done watching, I'll leave you two more in here so you can binge a little bit more. See you on the next one. Bye!